Welcome to First Missionary Baptist Church. My name is Pastor Calvin Smith. I want to thank you for allowing us to share this Sunday morning with you. But before we can have an expectation that everything he said will come to pass. Amen. Because he's alive. He has risen. Amen. We serve the risen King. Glory to your name, Father. Glory to your name, Father. Glory to your name. This morning, we want to welcome in everybody. Welcome those that are here in person. We want to welcome our social media audience. Thank you for joining us today. You're in for a treat. You're in to hear what God is doing in the house today. And God is going to, it's going to be a move of God this morning. It's going to be a move of God this afternoon. Amen. So, y'all be seated. Welcome, welcome, welcome. You look good this morning, and God is doing great things right now. He's doing great things right now. So as we move forward, we're going to have our announcements, and just thank God that we serve the risen King. Amen. Good morning, members, guests, partners, and friends, and welcome to First Missionary Baptist Church, where we are empowering believers to expand God's kingdom. And thank you for watching and listening to this week's upcoming events and announcements. FNBC would like to wish a happy birthday to all members and guests who are celebrating their special day on today or this week. If that is you, please stand at this time so we can recognize you. And if you are watching us via Facebook Live or YouTube, please put it in the chat that today is your birthday so we can recognize you. Happy birthday and may God bless you with many, many more from the FMBC family. Today, our very own First Lady Tanya Smith will be preaching for our morning worship service. You don't want to miss this dynamic and life-changing word that she will be bringing forth straight from the heart of God. Check out our Facebook and YouTube pages on this Thursday to view the episode with Conversations with Christopher, where our very own Pastor and Lady Smith were the honored guest to appear and interview with Dr. C.S. Wilson. Check out the footage where Pastor and First Lady talk about their experiences with being ministers in Thomasville, North Carolina and at First Missionary Baptist Church and also as pastor teaches about kingdom. FMBC members and guests, please save the date for Thursday, August 17th at 7 o'clock p.m. as Pastor Smith travels to Lambert Chapel NBC Church in Siler City, North Carolina to preach at their revival entitled I Choose to Worship. The host and pastor of Lambert Chapel NBC Church is Reverend Kevin Leak. Want to learn how to have a powerful and effective prayer life? Well, join us for our Prayer 101 sessions led by our very own First Lady Smith on this Saturday at 10 a.m. Remember, all our Prayer 101 sessions are via Zoom, so please send your email information to fmbcempower at gmail.com to receive the link. Also, don't forget that we still are having our FMBC Community Fund Day. We have rescheduled our date now to Saturday, September 16th from 11 a.m. to 2 p.m. It is still not too late to get in on volunteering so that you can let your light shine to our community. Please see Sister Tiffany or Sister Tara to sign up and volunteer today. FNBC, we are blessed to be a blessing and what a privilege and honor it is to give unto God our tithes, offerings, and gifts of love. There are four ways that you can give unto our ministry. You can give in person during our 1045 a.m. worship service. You can use the Givelify app or Givelify website and give online or your mobile device. Search First Missionary Baptist Church when you use Givelify or you can mail in your tithes and offerings. Remember, God is our source and we give with a cheerful heart. 
And as you are giving your tithes and offerings on today, please remember that today is Pastor's Aid Sunday. Every second Sunday of the month, you have the opportunity to sow into God's kingdom as we continue to bless and honor our pastor, the man that God has truly gifted to this house. So don't forget, as you are giving, earmark your envelope and sow a special seed towards Pastor's Aid. At this time, we ask that all of you please silence your cell phone or any electronic device that you have with you on today. Remember that there is no food or drink in the sanctuary, and please limit any unnecessary movements as the word goes forth on today. This concludes our announcements and upcoming events for this week. We are First Missionary Baptist Church, and our leaders are Pastor Calvin and Lady Tanya Smith. We are located in the beautiful city of Thomasville at 103 Church Street, and you can contact us at 336-475-9632. Thank you for your continued support and generosity to our ministry. And remember, at FNBC, we are empowering believers to expand God's kingdom. Stay in the blessing. Amen. At this point, we're going to do or have our give our tithes and offerings. So we ask that if you would, you stand as we get prepared to um, give. And so we're going to have our confession. Amen. Amen. And remember, always sow your seed. Don't throw it. Attach your faith to what you're sowing. Amen. Amen. So let's go. You ready? Lord, I thank you for the blessing me with this opportunity to worship you with my tithes and offerings. It's a privilege to give my talents, gifts, and my resources to First Missionary Baptist Church to empower our believers to present the gospel to this community. We sow this seed into this ministry, being obedient to your word. You said that if I give, it shall be given back to me, good measure, pressed down, and shaken together. Lord, I thank you that I don't lack for anything and that you're able to make every grace, every favor, and earthly blessing come to me in abundance so that I always and in all circumstances furnish in abundance for every good work and charitable donation. In Jesus' name, pray. Amen. Ushers have charge. time we get ready to receive and get the word of God this morning we have a dynamic teacher and speaker of the word full of the power of God amen so at this time if you don't mind standing to your feet and welcome Lady Tanya to bring us the word amen
testing. This is my crutch, y'all. I just, uh, before we go into the word, I just want to sing a little bit of that worship song. I know Teron can't play it, but I, I just, I just want us to join in and sing it again, you know, just to prepare our hearts for what the Spirit of the Lord may be saying today. So, you know, you don't have to be a singer because God's, you know, he's not listening. He wants your heart anyway. Amen. <clears throat> Hallelujah. You have won the victory. Hallelujah. You have won it all for me. Death could not hold you down. You are the risen King. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Should have had Braylon to come up here and help us keep the beat. But, <laughs> but y'all did pretty good. You're not ready for the road yet, but you're pretty, you did pretty good. So God is good. Again, this morning, I greet you in the matchless name of Jesus. As I stand here, first of all, giving honor to God and giving honor to my pastor, my shepherd, my prophet, my husband, in his absence and I just want to thank God for it him stepping out because you know him leaving his pulpit on a Sunday morning uh, he, this gentleman had to be very special to him so I'm grateful that he um, allowed himself to do something different to kind of step out of his box and go uh, minister to um, another sh sheepfold and that's what it's all about at the end of the day well, again, this morning, we have something. We're going to see what the Lord is saying to us today. And I just want to thank uh, Reverend Godley for her prayer this morning. Um, she was, uh, you know, pastor gave us a mandate. He said, anytime, every time you teach a minister, you better talk about the kingdom. And so, uh, you know, we got that in bread in us because I think we're nervous if we don't even mention it. You know, you know, we're like, oh, I didn't say anything about the kingdom. I think Reverend Godley said she had forgotten and she had to go back and get something. So, uh, you know, we, you always hear about the kingdom in this house because I think this is what God is saying to his people in these last days. I think he, I don't think he had, had, had it hidden, but I think for such a time as this, the kingdom message is a timely message. And I think uh, we should be hearing that. And not only hearing it, we should be walking as kingdom citizens uh, amongst the world and the people that we uh, come across. So uh, I'm just going to be grateful today and I'm thanking you and I had an illustration, but I think I'm going to move forward because sometimes, you you know, what you do and what the Holy Spirit wants may be two different things. So we're going to honor him today. But today, my kingdom, and it, as I stated earlier, Reverend Golly was all over my topic, and she was talking about the, you know, the kingdom come in our lives and how we should be kingdom citizens. And, and I'm like, yeah, yeah, God, I'm right. I know I'm on the right path now. You know, because you'll hear in a minute why I said that. You know, you're right there. My, thank you, Holy Ghost, because only you could have done that. So I admonish you to come out to prayer on Sunday mornings. We do have intercessory prayer from 10 a.m. to 1030, where we prepare this house, prepare you, prepare me for the move of God, what God wants to do in his house, okay, and in our lives, okay, individually. This kingdom message is big and as I heard Miles Monroe said he'll be teaching it you know until he dies and Calvin said the same oh, I'm sorry y'all pastor said the same thing he's going to be this is the message he'll die teaching and I because I believe this is what God wants us to grab hold of in this time okay all right um go ahead sit down sit down. 
Yeah, you make me, when they say, you're making me nervous. Y'all remember that subject. Y'all, most of y'all, some of y'all remember that, that teaching. You're making me nervous. Okay. All right. Um, today, I, I, I'm just going to read something here. But, you know, I'm a teacher. I'm, I, I, I try to instruct. I, I don't have that pre, uh, you won't see me all over the pulpit. I might step like this, but it won't be long and it won't be far, okay? All right. Let's put on some aid here. Can't uh, see these words. I'm not going to confess that. It just helps me to focus on these words. I'm, you know, I'm not going to speak. I can't see. You know, I'm not going to speak that. But I'm going to say it just helps me focus. Every one of us was born to fulfill an assignment. God created each one of us to solve a problem. Now we're here on purpose. What? For a purpose. You're not just haphazardly here. You're not born at this time just because a mom and dad came together at whatever how many years ago and you were a product of that. God has us here for a purpose, for a reason. You know, there's an assignment that you and I, you and I have to fulfill. There is something that God wanted to accomplish that requires our existence. Yes, you, me, all of us, okay? None of us are accidents or mistakes, no matter what series of events brought us into this world. Because again, I'm saying you are here for such a time as this. Our place on this planet now is related to an assignment that God had in his mind long before the existence of the world. You know, he said, what, what did he say in Jeremiah 1.5? He says, before I formed you. Well, you were somewhere before he formed you. Where were you? Have you ever thought about that? Where were we before he formed us? Where were you? You were, in, you were with him. I believe that's where we were before because we go back to him, our spirits. You know, we were in existence. He said, before I formed thee in the belly, I knew you. I knew you. Knew, past tense. Thank you, right, Ms. Bratton? New past tense. I got to make sure I include everybody today. So this makes us critical to God's plan. My subject today is advancing God's kingdom. Now, Reverend Golly told us a whole lot of stuff this morning, but I'm like, okay, God, how do we get there? What are some of the things you and I have to do to make sure this kingdom message is moving forward in the world? And so he gave me some time of ago uh, this topic uh, advancing God's kingdom let us pray father I just rejoice in this day God because this is the day that you have made God and I thank you Lord we're here for a purpose God and I thank you even at this time we're here in this building because you designed for us to be and God I praise you Lord for the word that's going to come forth today God, I pray it might not come forth in, 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 in a way that people want to hear, but God, I pray that they just hear what you're saying. God, I thank you, Lord. They, they would not really see me, but they'll see you speaking through me as the vessel that you have chosen to use this morning. So, God, I thank you, Lord, that your word comes forth in power, comes forth in authority. But, God, most of all, that word is alive and sharper than any two-edged sword. And, God, your word coming forth today will change the as our pastor say, the trajectory of our lives. So God, I love you today, and I thank you, Holy Spirit, have your way. God, I thank you, this is your house. These are your people, and God, we rejoice as we come together today in unity to hear what the Spirit of the Lord is saying to his people in Yeshua's name, in Jesus' name, amen and amen. Advancing God's kingdom. You're going to hear me say that quite a bit. I might even ask you to say it sometime. So make sure you remember those three words. Advancing God's kingdom. Now what is it? Advancing God's okay. kingdom. Okay. All right. From the days of John the Baptist until now, the kingdom of heaven has been forcefully advancing. And forceful men and women, you know, men is not gender related. It's just man like God, anyway, lay hold of it. Let me read that again. From the days of John the Baptist until now, the kingdom of heaven has been forcefully advancing and forceful men lay hold of it. That's Matthew 11, uh, verse 12. Matthew 11, verse 12. In other words, ever since the days of John, an invasion has been underway. Hallelujah. 
a military coup. I heard that word, you know, I was, I said, coup. I said, how you spell that? C-O-O. -O. And then when I put it in, of course, it's not C-O-O, -O, it's C-O-U-P. I learn a lot when I'm studying. I learn how to spell, learn how to pronounce names. But a military coup is in progress with which no one knows about unless you have been captured unless you or I have been captured. A coup is a sudden, violent overthrow of an existing government by a small group. Listen to that again. I'm like, God, you're so good, you know. Even Webster had, he knew some things. A sudden, violent overthrow of an existing government by a small group. So my question to you this morning, or one question I might have, have you been taken over by this kingdom? Has this kingdom taken over you? Has this kingdom taken over me? I have been taken over by the kingdom of heaven. It is my heart, in, in my heart, my mind, my soul, my body, my attitude. God knows he's been working on my attitude about things. Has made me a dangerous woman in the kingdom of God. You know, I... I I, I'm going to call myself that. I, I'm, get, I'm, I'm doing some things, you know, and I'm not bragging as pastor. I'm going to say, I'm going to use all his words today as braggadocious, you know, I, I'm going to get him to spell that for me. But I'm just, I'm just celebrating what Jesus is doing in our lives. Amen? All right. Now, that word advance means to move forward with purpose with a cause. So we're going to move this kingdom forward with purpose and a cause. Okay? Now a kingdom is defined as a sphere of influence in which a king rules. Now who is this king we're talking about? We got to know who our king is. Jesus. Therefore, wherever God rules, we find an expression of his kingdom. Everywhere you and I go, there should be evidence of God. We should be taking God's character, his nature, his, his purposes everywhere we go. You know, we should be a representative. You know, you know, I remember the scripture that said that they have been with God. That's how it should be with us. Wherever we go, wherever we leave a place, don't let them be saying that they, we've been with some, some, the other. You know, don't let them, don't leave that aroma of stench <laughs> leave a sweet aroma that we they've been in the presence of the Lord and that's what you and I should leave when we leave or enter a place it should be the sweet smelling savor that comes in with us and when we leave it should linger okay amen amen we must exercise a holy violence over self rule and self will I, I believe that's our biggest enemies ourselves you know we want to blame it on the enemy we don't say the devil, the devil no we just selfish i can only speak for me selfish and self-centered i believe that's why god put me in the hospitality uh because i confess i did have selfish tendencies <laughs> And so, <laughs> and then when, you know, time came to change careers, he's, you know, it's like the Holy Spirit, I'm going to put you in the hospitality. I'm like, the what? That means I got to serve what? Other people. You all don't know. I work in a hotel. You don't know how many toilets I have plunged for the guests. I have to give everything because that's what I'm there for to be hospitable, to serve them. And I said, God, I know you got a sense of humor now because you have put me in an industry that was totally opposite of my, my, my character, what he was trying to develop in me. And so today I'm grateful, I'm growing. I have a young lady that works for me and he's letting me know that, Tanya, you still got a long way to go because she gets on my last nerve every day. She challenges me and I'll leave there defeated but last week, I think I saw light. I was nice to her. And it was kind of not fake. I said, God, I think I'm getting this. Now, she still did the same irking things that she always does. 
but they didn't affect me the same way. So I know I'm growing. Hallelujah. Praise God. Yes, I want to clap on that. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. I can, yes, clap, because that's big for me. All right. As believers in Jesus Christ, we are grateful that God has rescued us from the dominion of darkness and brought into the kingdom of the son he, lived, he loves, in whom we have redemption, the forgiveness of sins. Now, I have a lot of scriptures today that we're going over. So, you know, if you want to write them down, that's fine. But go back and listen. And that's in Colossians 1, 13 through 14. But I just, if I just listen today, okay? The message translation of the same verse says, God rescued us from dead in alleys and dark dungeons. I know I was in a dead end alley. I know when he saved me, where he found me was in a, a dungeon. I can attest to that. He set us up in the kingdom of the son he loved so much. The son who got us out of the pit we were in. Got rid of the sin we were doomed to keep repeating. We began our walk with Jesus from a place of victory. And we must advance his kingdom with victory. That's why I wanted to sing that song. You know, we, we've already won. You know, we are not, we, what's the saying? the saying say? We're not going to victory. We're moving from victory. We're already victorious in him. You know, glory to God. In these days of prevalent and advancing evil, terrorism, war, economic uncertainty, moral decline, family breakdown, hallelujah, you name it, and fear, it is time for the kingdom of God to advance. You know, and we're that army. We are that army that God is going to use in these days to advance his kingdom. You know, he told us to put on some clothes before we go out to fight. Well, we don't really have to fight, but yes, we do. Because I got a sword. He didn't give me a sword if I didn't need to fight. But uh, there's a different type of fight. He gave us some armor to put on. He gave us the belt of truth firmly surrounded to help us secure the truth of his word. That's the first thing that the soldier puts on because everything hinges on his word, truth. He gave us a breastplate to cover our vital organs. Amen. We need the covering of it so the enemy can't harm us you know in battle that uh armor that shield that shield that breastplate protected from those darts coming in wounding them vital organs heart kidneys all those things he gave us the gospel of his peace that when we and you and i go with that gospel message how many of us know that's the message you and i should be preaching that's the only message Jesus taught, preached was the gospel of the kingdom. All right. The shield of faith, hallelujah, where when we are constantly, those arrows are constantly coming at us. And, you know, we put that shield up. Have you all seen that shield? Have you all seen some pictures of that thing? That thing from the top to the bottom. I don't even, so high, I don't even know how they carried it. It was big. But, you know, I thought, I said, the devil is, you know, and I'm not giving him no play, but he's big. What he does, he do goes all out. And we have to be ready. That shield has to cover everything. And not only that, that shield just didn't cover you. That shield was big enough for somebody else. Did y'all know that? Did y'all know the shield was big enough for another person? Well, sometimes, you know, we got to cover our family. Sometimes we have to cover our co-workers. Sometimes we have to cover even people we don't like. You know, because our faith won't work if you don't love. I think that's what the scripture says. I, these ain't my words. Woo, child. Oh, we have to put on the helmet of salvation because you know, you know, we got to protect these thoughts, our mind. You know, you be thinking stuff, Lord, where did that come from? Ah, that's why we got to protect what we see because a lot of our thoughts are coming from the things we lay our eyes on. You know, now I'm not condemning anybody, but be careful with that television because that's what it does. It tells a vision and whatever you're watching. Don't they, oh, I want to, I had a friend used to watch things and he was like, oh, don't bother me. I'm like, well, at that time I was a new Christian. I didn't know, but I have learned, yes, it does. It's subtle. Those messages, that vision, whatever you see, those eye gates, the ears, what you listen to. Be careful, young uh, people, what you hear. You know, oh, I can listen to that. It don't pay. I'm just listening to the beat. No, if those words are coming out, they're going in. 
they're going in. So be careful what we listen to, what we see. And okay. And the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God, a most powerful weapon. And some of them would say when I was studying this kind of a while back, they said the swords were like little short ones. They, you know, they were these big sabers, you know, some of them were, but some of them were so short because when they got to the enemy, they just wanted to, you know. <clears throat> Hallelujah. Glory to God. Amen. Woo. All right. <laughs> the kingdom must advance in our personal lives, our marriages, our homes, and again, in every facet of society. For every true believer of Jesus Christ, this is not a time for us to re retreat. This is not a time for us to get, get out the closet of intercession. Get, it's time. You don't pray long enough. We, you, I'm sorry. You have prayed and interceded. Look, get out the closet and put some feet to your faith. You know, it's time to go. You interceding for that person. If you can get, it's time to go share the gospel now. You know, we done talked and prayed. Get out the closet. Everything else done come out the closet. The only thing left in the closet is the Christian. You know, we still hanging out in the closet. You know, I think sometimes we think we are, uh, what is it? Uh, secret agents or something. No, the old days are over. Come on out. Be seen. Be heard. Amen. Amen. Every test and trial we face is an opportunity for training to reign. Y'all remember some of that. We reign, we training for reigning, you know, that's it. Revelations 3, 21 says, to him who overcomes, I will give the right to sit with me on my throne just as I overcame and sat down with my father on his throne. That's God's will, y'all, to be seated. You know, and we're in, when we're in Christ Jesus, we're seated in heavenly places with him. Now, I don't know how that looks. I, when I read the Bible, I try to visualize. Now, Lord, what did that look like? You on the throne, Jesus on your right. And you say we're seated in heavenly places. Where are we? You know, read the Bible like that, you know. Just think, now where are we, Lord? Are we just like around you, or where are we? Are we all of us to the right and nobody to the left? I, I don't know. But anywho, it just blesses me to ask questions like this. The teaching of the kingdom was a priority in the ministry of Jesus. He not only taught the gospel of the kingdom, he demonstrated the kingdom. It's not just enough for us to talk about it. We got to demonstrate Okay, we are called to no less of a mission. Jesus began his ministry with a call of repentance. This is how Jesus started that day. Matthew 4, 17 says, From that time Jesus began to preach and to say, Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Now, repent means a complete change of mind and thinking a complete change of mind and thinking a whole new mentality and of course a change of our direction you mostly hear repent means if you're going this way you turn around and go back this way but don't you know that you can go back Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. You know, that's why Romans 12, 1 and 2 is so important. You know, repenting again means a new mentality and a course, a change in your life's direction, a whole new mental, mental capacity, what we think. That's why Romans 12, 1 and 2 is so important. It says, I beseech ye, therefore, by the mercies of God, that you present your body a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God, which is what? Your reasonable. That's the least we can do, we're supposed to do. But then it says, be not conformed to this world, but be ye what? Transformed by the what? Renewing of your mind, that you may what? Prove. Now, you got to prove this to people. People ain't going to just take you at your word. I'm so sorry. It won't happen. You know, they you got to prove it. They want to see some what the Fred Price uh, theme song was. 
evidence. We have to show some kind of evidence that we are who we say we are. You know, people want to see. Well, well, I hear you. What you say? I can't see, hear what you're saying for seeing what you do. Don't let that be the testimony people say about you and me. You know, when we say we're believers in Christ, they should see some evidence of that. You know, in the way we walk and talk and treat other people. Like I said, I'm growing. Ooh, my young lady, she probably ain't seen a whole lot of evidence, you know, in certain areas. Cause so she had me up the pole there. Good. <laughs> Hallelujah. That we may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Will of God is. God's will is what? Good. God's will is what? Acceptable. And God's will, word for our lives, is what? Perfect. Amen. Glory to God. I'm going to want a testimony here. I blessed my um, pastor this morning. You know, he uses these little notebooks. Y'all got to get one. I'm sorry. Make sure you do because you can't be flipping pages like I usually do. You know, just flip them. So I blessed him this morning. I said, y'all forgive me. I'm not being disrespectful. Calvin, look what I got. And I showed him just this binder. I could have given him a million dollars. This blessed him so much that I got me a little old binder and put my message in here. He said, God, I, God you did. Isn't that easier? I said, yeah, it is easy to flip because when you got those pages and then one fall on the floor and you need to go back and get it, you in trouble. You ain't going to find it. Guess what? The enemy's going to hide it somewhere. It's going to fall. So now I'm organized and he's happy. He's going to really do a great job today where he is. I know he is. Jesus commanded us in Matthew 6, 33. He says, but seek ye what? First, the kingdom of God. Okay. And his righteousness and all these things shall be added unto you. Now, if you've been here for any length of time, we should already know the kingdom of God and how to recognize it. I'm not going back through that. If you don't know, pastor's been teaching and preaching on the kingdom for quite a while now. So I shouldn't have to go back. When I say when, the, when that kingdom of God or you know, the kingdom of heaven comes up, you should automatically know what we're talking about, okay? What's our subject today? Advancing God's kingdom. Jesus commanded us to preach the gospel of the kingdom to the whole world, what? Before he comes back. Okay, all right. Matthew 24, 14 says, and this gospel of the kingdom will be preached. He didn't say it might be. It will be preached in the whole world as a testimony to all nations and then the end will come so jesus is not coming back until this message has been taught and preached to all nations all nations mean all people all people on the earth okay i read somewhere over half of the world's population has yet to hear the gospel message that's a lot. We got work to do, y'all. We got a lot to do. We got to get it out, these four walls coming in, you know, listening, going back out, coming back next week, listening. We, we got work to do. We got to be advancing God's kingdom. Jesus' last teaching to his disciples was about the kingdom. Acts 1 and 3 says, after his suffering, he showed himself to these men and gave many convincing proofs that he was alive. He appeared to them for over a period of 40 days and spoke about the kingdom of God. This message is so important. Jesus, like he said, this is the only message Jesus taught. The apostles proclaimed the kingdom. Acts 19.8 says, Paul entered the synagogue and spoke boldly there for three months. He in the church preaching y'all for three months. Can you imagine people even coming to listen for three months? We can't get people here once a week. You know? Suppose our church was open seven days a week. Or, whoa, what would that look like? We don't want to know. It ain't a pretty picture. Because some of us wouldn't be here. I don't know if I would be here. I don't know if pastor would be here every day. But anywho, you know, uh, you know that's, that's what it was at that day. That we don't value the, the word of God, the teaching of God. We, we somehow have um, bought into the world system so much that the kingdom of God, we just think it's a Sunday thing or what, maybe. Anywho. All right. Okay, I'm going to start again with that scripture, Acts 19, 8. Paul entered the synagogue and spoke boldly there for three months, arguing persuasively about the kingdom of God. 
Now, he was probably talking to maybe Jews, but Paul was sent to the Gentiles. So he had some, some teaching and preaching and convincing to do. But, you know, I, 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 I'm going to... I'm going to say this, that if he could have preached for a long, but he had to be showing something too. There had to be some evidence as he preached. Acts 28, 30 or 31, Acts 28, 30 through 31, it says, For two whole years, Paul stayed there in his own rented house and welcomed all who came to see him. When Paul was on lockdown, you know, it's kind of like house arrest, you know, you know, so... That's where he was at that time. But people came to see him. There's a hunger out there for the word of God. There's a hunger today for the word of God. People might not recognize what that hunger is. They try to fulfill it with all kinds of worldly things. But there's a hunger, and they don't recognize that that hunger is that built-in desire for God to be like we were created in his image, to be like him. That's what that is. You and I, when we were in the world, we were seeking stuff, doing stuff. But we didn't realize that that was what we were really looking for. You know, so we tried this and did that and did these things and whatever. And some of us, not us some of y'all might have lived that perfect life. But you still needed a savior. You know, I don't care who you are. Okay? It says, boldly and without hindrance, he preached the kingdom of God and taught about the Lord Jesus Christ. Church, we have a conflict of kingdoms, and we know that. We have the kingdom of God and the kingdom of Satan. However, a time is coming when Satan's kingdom will be cast down, and God's kingdom will be established. Hallelujah. Revelation 11, 15 says, the seventh angel sounded his trumpet, and there were loud voices in heaven which said, The kingdom of the world has become the kingdom of our God and of his Christ, and he will reign forever and ever. We, what we see now will not be the final result. The kingdom of God will rule. And, you know, sometimes I look around and say, God, you know, that's hard to believe because this worldly kingdom is just so, it just seems like it's so big and getting so, getting worse and worse. But God said, just hold on, child. You haven't seen nothing yet. And I really believe that with all my heart. This gives us reason to hope and persevere in the task of advancing God's kingdom. You know, it's kind of like leaven, a little bit, a little at a time. You know, I think that's sometimes maybe how armies did. When they were attacking, they just take a little ground, a little ground. That's how it is in the kingdom of heaven, kingdom of God. We take a little territory at a time. We don't go conquer a whole big area, but we just advance. Remember, we're advancing, advancing, little by little. We know we are on the winning side. There are many important ingredients to God's kingdom. And if we want that kingdom to advance. So we're going to talk about some of those uh, ingredients that you and I need to make sure that they're manifesting in our lives. Okay. The first one is humility. And it is required for acceptance or entrance into the kingdom of God. And this is why I say that in Matthew 18, 1 through 5. It says, at that time, the disciples came to Jesus and asked, who is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven? Now, has anybody been watching The Chosen? I admonish y'all to watch that. Hush up, Tanisha. Y'all need to watch The Chosen. I'm not going to tell you what it is. You go find out, but you need to watch it. You know, you're watching on TV and this. Watch something. Now, don't judge it, but The Chosen, it has just changed my view of things. Now, I'm not saying everything is biblically correct. Just like anything people make, they got to add a little something into it. But watch The Chosen, okay? That's all I'm going to say. Go to the movie when it come out, too. Right. At that time, the disciples came to Jesus and asked, Who is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven? He called a little child and had him stand among them. And he said, I tell you the truth. Now, I don't even know why Jesus got to say that, but, you know, he had to even tell that, had to say that, you know. And, and anyway, he said, I tell you the truth. Unless you change and become like little children, you will never enter the kingdom of heaven. Therefore, 
whoever humbles, and humble, humbles themselves means submitting to the authority of another. Whoever humbles himself like this child is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven. And whoever welcomes a little child like this in my name welcomes me. We become participants in God's kingdom purely by God's grace, not because of anything you and I have earned. We have nothing, as I stated earlier, to boast about. Ephesians 2.8 says, For it is by grace you have been saved, through faith, and this is not from yourselves. We talk about humility here. It is a gift of God. Having a spirit of humility will always be demonstrated by exalting Christ more and more. Not our ministry, not our work, and not what we do for him. Okay? John the Baptist had the right attitude. John 3.30 says, he must become greater. I must become less. Talking about Jesus, he said, he must become greater. I must become less. We're talking about what, y'all? Advancing God's kingdom. Paul, with all his achievements and his heritage, recognized in a spirit of humility that all of that that he had was inferior to knowing Christ. And we know what Paul, you know, Paul, let's read Philippians 3, 7 through 8, and this will explain that. But whatever was to my profit, I consider loss for the sake of Christ. What is more, I consider everything a loss compared to the suppressing, suppressing, I got a gnat, y'all. It's bothering me. Okay. I consider everything a loss compared to the suppressing greatness of knowing Christ Jesus my Lord, for whose sake I have lost all things. I consider them rubbish that I may gain Christ. Now, you know, Paul, you know, people know who Paul's um, pedigree was. Paul, his notoriety, he was a Pharisee of the Pharisees, that I've heard it say. He knew the law of Moses. He knew the five books of the Pentateuch. He knew the Old Testament. Paul was the man back then, you know? All right. Paul even realized that all the things he had learned, if they were contrary to the message of the kingdom of God, he counted them as, some scriptures say, dung, not profitable to him, okay? Next ingredient we have is submission. Now, that's difficult for some of us. Uh, anyway, Jesus is the ultimate example of submission. When he faced the cross, he prayed, what? Not my will but your will be done. Kingdom advancement will not take place apart from surrendering our whole life and our will in complete allegiance to Jesus. Okay? The Bible tells us to die how often? Daily. And it says take up your what? Cross. The cross is an instrument of what? Death. Ain't nothing pretty about the cross. You know. Okay. He is the commander-in-chief, the one who leads us into battle to advance his kingdom. Miles Monroe's definition of kingdom speaks to submission. And when I read it, I said, well, that's where submission is a lot of it in there. The kingdom is the governing influence. Now, influence means submission because you're going to be influenced by someone. you got to submit to something of a king over his territory. So that means we got to submit to somebody's territory, impacting it with his personal will. Who are we submitting to? Who's going to be the king? Who's, who are we making Lord over our lives? Uh, with uh, impacting it with his personal will, purpose, and intent. All right. We all know the other um, definition of kingdom. We're not going to say that today. It says, the attitude of submission also implies complete obedience. Lack of obedience, even in the small areas of our, our lives, upset the plan and purpose of, uh, purposes of God. We see that in the life of Saul, who fell from God's favor because of disobedience. 1 Samuel 15, 19, 24 tells that story. And we know that Saul was, you know, the children of Israel wanted a king. 
And we do know that. And they wanted to, what did they say? They wanted to be what? Like other people. Don't be saying that. We don't want to be. If they're, they're not believers in Jesus Christ, that's who we pattern ourselves after. But the children of Israel wanted to be like other people. And God told them, he said, okay, they're going to rule over you. They're going to take stuff from you. They're going to do what the world is doing to us today. Yeah. <laughs> Trying to rule over, take things from us. But you know, the kingdom of God, it gives. And so he said, God finally gave up and said, okay, I'm going to give you a king. So I guess eventually... Uh, the, Amalek, the Amaleks, they were a group of people, a tribe or something, or when they were leaving Egypt, you know, the Am Amalek Amalekites, <laughs> Amalekites, you know, they wanted to walk by their land. They wouldn't go touch it. They wouldn't go do anything. They just needed to pass through to go to the promised land. Well, the Amalekites wouldn't let them go. And, you know, they fought against them and whatever. But God said, just, just I'll handle it. So years later, God said, it's time for me to judge the Amalekites. You know, their cup had run over. Okay, so he appointed Saul as king. Told Samuel came and told Saul, it's time to go to battle. We got to take care of this matter. But God told him, Samuel told uh, Saul, kill everything. And you got to really understand that. And I'm not going to go into that. But he said, kill everything and don't take anything from them don't take nothing so we know usually when kings go to battle they take all the spoil you know they don't leave no good stuff you know but God told them not to take anything all right so they go fight do whatever they want to do and they won of course because God promised them they would so here comes Samuel a few days later and Saul goes running out to him it's over we did what you told us to do you know Amalekites are defeated. And Samuel said, what is this I hear? I hear some sheep and I hear some cows. You didn't do what God told you to do. Yes, we did. Yeah, we did. We, we did exactly. We killed everything. We took, but we didn't take this stuff because we're going to sacrifice it to God. You know, that's what we do sometimes with our stuff. We're going to keep this because I'm, I'm going to give it to God, you know. I'm going to do so-and-so. I'm going to so -so. bless somebody with it. You know, it never, it, the blessing, it, it doesn't happen. But anyway, Saul, Samuel was hot because Samuel loved Saul. And he knew that once he had disobeyed, so I believe Samuel left and came back and said, you disobeyed God because you didn't do everything that God told you to do. So we have to be careful. We can't just do half or a part. You know, like they say about a, a truth. If any part of it is not true, the whole thing is a lie. You know, sometimes we try to balance truth with a little bit of untruth in, uh, with truth. Mm -mm, that negates the whole thing. And so what did the, the scripture that you and I know, he says, what is it? Obedience is better than sacrifice. God didn't care about the stuff. He wanted to see our obedience. That's, he doesn't care how much we accumulate. He just want to make sure we're obedient to his word. Amen. All right. Abraham is also an example of, of, of submission. Hebrews 11, 8 says, By faith, Abraham, when called to go to a place, he would later receive as his inheritance, obeyed and went even though he did not know where he was going. Submission also implies a willingness to enter into an intimate relationship with the Father. Wow, we talk about that a lot in prayer. Only as we abide in his presence and love will we receive the wisdom, grace, power, strength, and every resource necessary to advance the kingdom of God in his strength now and not in our own self-effort. Can't do it on our own the way we think it should be done. You know, a lot of people, a lot of geniuses out there and smart. But God has a standard. And he admonishes us to follow his stand, standard. Because God knows the end from the beginning. And so it would have behoove us to listen. But God, I, I think this, don't think nothing. Just obey. Listen and obey, Okay. John 15, 4 says, live in me, make your home in me just as I do in you. 
In the same way that a branch can't bear grapes by itself, but only if by being joined to the vine, you can't bear fruit unless you are joined with me. I am the vine. You are the branches. Don't get it twisted. Don't get twisted who's, who's in charge, okay? I am the vine, Jesus said, and you are the branches. When you're joined with me and I'm with you, the relationship, intimate and organic, the harvest is sure to be abundant. Separated, you can't produce a thing. I love how that. Message Bible does this. You can't do a thing separated from God. Anyone who separates from me is dead wood, gathered up and thrown on the bonfire. But if you make yourselves at home with me, and my words are at home in you. That's so important. The word of God must have first place in our lives. Okay? Yeah. Amen. You can be sure that whatever you ask will be listened to and acted upon. This is how my father shows who he is. When you produce grapes, when you mature as my disciples, okay? Now, what is our message today? Advancing God's kingdom. The next illustration is aggressiveness. And that word aggressive means ready to attack. Remember, we are to be aggressively seeking the word of God. I mean, the kingdom of God, excuse me. Being aggressive for the kingdom means that I will surrender my will, fears, personal rights, selfishness, and give all my energy in every aspect of my life, hallelujah, to advance God's kingdom. I do not separate my personal life or church life into separate compartments. We shouldn't be compartmentalizing. I think I got that right. God, I can handle this. You just take care of this over here. Uh, when I call, you answer. What I ask for something, you give. But I think I got this. Just because, and it could be going perfect. Your life could be as far as you think is perfect, but it's not. You know, just because you don't see strife or anything, just because you're not dealing with anything, that doesn't mean that everything is perfect if you're in control, okay? Being aggressive for the kingdom means that I will surrender my will, okay? I do not separate my personal life or church life into different compartments. All of life in king, is kingdom life, and I will be in step with God in pursuing his kingdom work with all diligence, okay? I will resist the temptation to be, to be passive. You know, I hear that word a lot. Passivity is accepting or allowing no resistance. Acceptance or allowing no resist, resistance. What did the scripture tell us? To what? Resist the devil and he will flee. But you know, we always want to quote that part, but what is the first part of that? Submit to God. You can't resist the devil if you are not submitted to God. You got no power, you ain't got nothing. So you can't, and so if you're wondering, why well, I'm praying, how come I can't get victory in this area? You haven't submitted to God, you know? Because you can tell when you're submitted to God. I can tell when I'm submitted to God, hallelujah. Mm, I can tell, and you can too. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Passivity is a spiritual condition that reduces one's spiritual effectiveness in the kingdom of God. A passive spirit allows Satan to gain access into the king's domain. Wow. We must be aggressive in our will to be disciplined citizens in God's kingdom. Glory to God. To advance God's kingdom, you and I must also grow. We got to grow. We can't stay babies, okay? Anything that is not growing or reproducing will ultimately lead to death. Now, we know that. No, you have got flowers, and I got a plant now and a thing that is dead. It's dead. Not like someone's house I kind of visited yesterday with all the green and beautiful yard. Woo! I came back and looked at mine. I said, ooh. Whoa, I need to get rid of that pot if I'm not going to water it. I need to throw it away. But you know, anything that is not growing or reproducing will ultimately lead to death. Growth should always be a major concern and passion if we want to see God's kingdom advance. Another principle for growth that is much needed and perceived. Okay, another principle for growth that is that it must be preceded by death or pruning. Now, we know that in the parable, John, it says that he'll prune us. Pruning is not that bad. 
you know, he just cutting off those things. I, we should welcome pruning because he's just cutting off those things that's not valuable to us or dead or holding us back. So we should value pruning, okay? Romans 12, 24 says, I tell you the truth, unless a kernel of wheat falls to the ground and dies, it remains only a single seed. But if it dies, it produces many seeds. It produces much fruit. John 15, 1 through 2 says, I am the true vine, and my father is the gardener. He cuts off every branch in me that bears no fruit. While every branch that does bear fruit, he'll prune it so that it will bear even more fruit. You know, the parable talks about bearing fruit, much fruit, and then what? More fruit. There's different stages. So you can just bear fruit if that's all you want. You can bear more fruit if that's all you want. But I want to bear much fruit because I know that's God's will. And I want him to get the best out of me. And I hope that's your desire too. Ask yourself, what needs to die or be pruned in your life or ministry in order to see God's kingdom advance? That's questions we should ask ourselves. Ask the Holy Spirit. God, what is in my life that's hindering me from becoming the person that you need to, for me to become, doing your will that's holding me back? Spiritual growth and maturity, we're going to talk about that. Unfortunately, there are too many long-term believers who are still acting like infants. I'm going to read that again. There are too many long-term believers who are still acting like infants. Okay. This is manifest. I'm going to show you some of the things that, uh, I'm going to read some of the things that, now if you find yourself in some of these, don't get offended. I found myself in a couple of them. All right. Being easily offended. All right, that's a sign of immaturity. Frequent discouragement. You know, every time you turn, you're discouraged. You know, God has made us so many great and mighty promises. We sung this morning, we already got the victory. Okay? Often lacking the ability to overcome temptation. You deal, and I might be dealing with the same sin or temptation over and over and over again. Lack of commitment. Wow, that's a biggie. You know, you see a lot of that now. You know, people aren't committed. You know, I see it, especially at work. You know, I, my new saying is people want a job, but they don't want to work. They just want the job. They come in, oh, they interview so well. Oh, gosh. That's what should be. That's going to be my red flag now. The best interview, no. Uh oh, I'm not. I'm sorry. <laughs> You know, I mean, because once they get in, and it ain't even 90 days. They don't even care about the 90, if there is such a 90-day rule. It might be nine days later. I need off. Did you take your training? No. You know, it's due. You, you only had seven days. I know. I can't get in. I'm talking about, I'm just reminiscing on some things I hear. Wow, forgive me. I had a flashback. You know, they just want the job, but they don't want to work. They just want the check. But they don't want to do anything for the check. They just want to sit there and do as least amount as possible, okay? Lack of accountability, okay? We don't want to be accountable, no. Did, mm -mm. You, all kinds of excuses why it's somebody else's fault. You know, never mind. Dependent on leaders for ministry rather than doing ministry. Now, I'm not going to say too much about that, but at some point in time, you know, we need each other. When you're a babe in Christ, you need that support. You need other mature Christians to either pray for you or help you through things. But there comes a time when we're the ones, as we mature, should be praying for others. You know, don't always stay the victim. Be the victor. Grow up in the things of God. Allow the word to mature you. That's where maturity comes from, in the word, spending time with God. 
in prayer, knowing what the word says, taking God at his word. God, you said that I can do this. I can do all things through Christ. Don't just say it. Trust him and walk in that, okay? Not knowing how to use your spiritual gifts. Now, every born-again believer that's in this house has a gift. Some have more than one, okay? And, and not only do we need to find out what those gifts are, you know, those gifts aren't all just spiritual all the time. They could be just a gift of, you know, music or a, a gift of art. But always use those gifts, gifts to what? Advance the kingdom of God. Look at all these singers out here that have all this talent. Most of them started in the church. But for some reason, they were drawn away, you know. That gift that God gave them to enhance the body of Christ and for the kingdom to be advanced, they're now using those gifts and talents, not just music, anything, you know. There's a lot of lawyers that are supposed to have been preachers. You know, and not saying anything against a lawyer not being a preacher, but, you know, because of the way they can exegete and the way they can talk and, you know, the audience they can gain and how they can uh, expound on things. Spiritual gift growth of kingdom citizens require personal choices such as the desire, will, and commitment to grow no matter what the cost. It's always going to cost us something. You know, salvation, when people say, you know, that's free. Salvation was, was not free. Someone paid a cost. There was a price paid. And for us to accept it, we're going to have to pay a price. Because my price is giving up the world, which I gladly give. I'll pay it, you know, to give up the world. Okay? True spiritual growth will never take place without an intimate relationship with the Father. It is our relationship with him that we find the grace to overcome the pressures and the temptations that want to ensnare us, our lives, okay? Phil Philippians 3 and 1 from the message says, I gave up all that inferior stuff so that I could know Christ personally. This is Paul again. Experience his resurrection power. Experience his resurrection power be a partner in his suffering, and go all the way with him to death. The Bible, again, says we have to love our life. Love not our lives unto death. We can't just want, you know, I, I, think, I, I think about death sometimes. And, you know, it used to be something that I was afraid. And I guess we all think about death that way. But now my thinking is changing. Now, I just leave that alone. I, you know, it, it, I'm not saddened about the fact that I will die. It used to, the only part that saddens me is that you leave loved ones and family and friends behind. But when you think about the prize, you know. But my thing is, God, I want to die empty. I don't want to die with ministry in me. I don't want to die full. I want to be like Paul. Finish. I want to finish my race. I want to be empty when I go. Wow. Amen. Giving advances the kingdom. Woo! God is a God of abundance. Do we really believe that? Barely surviving is not God's will. I remember in the scripture, and I said, well, God, you said the poor you will have with you always. He said, but that's not my will. That's just because that's what it's going to be. But I don't want to be a part of that. And I don't have to be kingdom citizens. Gosh, the things that God has in store for us, his will be done. Wow. Kingdom giving is, a, is vital for the kingdom advancement. Without this spirit of giving, the kingdom citizens live in frustration. Giving of our time, talents, resources, and all that we have is a natural result of being full of the Holy Spirit. That is just a natural bypass. Giving. If you're born again, your giving should be just natural, okay? God is a giving God. It is his nature. It should also be the nature of every true kingdom believer. Our first interest in the kingdom, not ourselves. That should be our first interest of the kingdom, not ourselves. 
the result will be abundance in the house, this house, your house, spiritual and physical, prosperity for every citizen, and adequate resources, even surplus for kingdom work. You know, that's in our confession, that we have more than enough so we can do the work of the ministry, okay? Second Chronicles 31.10, and I, and I really love this scripture when I came across it. It says, Azariah, the chief priest now, if anyone you study the Old Testament, we know that the, the priest, who took care of the priest? The priest didn't have jobs. You know that all day long, th their job was to, I'll put it like this, run the temple, keep them sacrifices going. So they didn't work. So when people would bring their sacrifices, there was parts of those sacrifices that they could keep. You know, certain portions of the meat, certain things that they grain. That's how they lived. That's who supported them was the people. But I'm hearing in this scripture, and that's why I loved it so much. Since the people began to bring their contributions to the temple of the Lord, people had stopped taking things to the temple. People had stopped giving. So the priests were probably hungry. You know, he says, since the people begin to bring their contributions to the temple of the Lord, we have had enough to eat and plenty to spare because the Lord has what? Blessed his people and this great amount is left over. You and I are blessed to be a blessing. You know, don't walk around with your hands closed. You know, that's why they call money what? currency is supposed to keep moving God blesses you you give next time he'll give you even more enough for you and to give and I'm learning that you know I hate to I have to wait till I'm this old to do that and to know and understand what the proper use of money is for but I'm so grateful that even now you know blessed to be a blessing Amen. We made a holy and faith-filled declaration here at this church through our confessions and prayer to grab hold of a vision that our pastor gave us that he knew came from the Lord, that this house would be debt-free. And the vision came to pass. God will do exactly what he says he'll do. We trust and believe. Not only this house, our houses. The power of the Holy Spirit also pushes us into the kingdom. And I'm coming to a close. Jesus came to reconnect us to his Father and his kingdom. The connecting link was the Holy Spirit. That is why the focus of his message was repent, for the kingdom of heaven is near. Okay? We have to use the gifts of the Spirit. God has, as we said, God has given us gifts. What gift should you ask God for? If we're in an assembly and you say, God, bless me, I, 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 use me, what gift would you ask for? Gift that's needed. <laughs> Whatever's needed. If healing, gift of healing. If tongues, interpretation of tongues, words of knowledge, prof, a prophetic words going forth, whatever. And the Bible tells us desire for what kind of gift? the best gift. Yeah. And I want God to use us. You know, we were talking about a visible demonstration of his kingdom. That's what we prayed for this morning. You know, we don't want to be kingdom citizens talking about the kingdom and not able to show a visible demonstration of that kingdom. And I don't care who you are, never say, well, I can't do that. Yes, you can. You know, don't limit God. Greatness is in us. We limit ourselves. God is there with his hand stretched, getting ready to, you know, like we said, we in prayer a lot of times, and we go pray, and then we say in Jesus' name, and we gone, and God's sitting up there like, but, uh, I got something I want, and we out the door. We don't take that time to sit and listen to him. You know, prayer is communication. Amen? Okay. Glory to God. Amen. Again, we want to see a demonstration of the Holy Spirit's power in this house, in our lives, in your house, amongst your family and friends and coworkers. 
Jesus, we see through numerous miracles, deliverances, and teaching with authority, demonstrated the power of the kingdom and delegated that authority to his followers. Now, we know that Jesus did, what did Jesus preach? The gospel of the kingdom. And we know that there were a lot of, what, miracles, signs, and wonders. But that didn't come till after he preached the gospel of the kingdom. That was the visible demonstration of him teaching and preaching the gospel message. When I, when I kind of saw that, wow, I'm like, gosh, help us, Lord. Because we don't want to miss Jesus. We don't want to miss, we don't, we want to make sure that everybody in our lives have a taste of this kingdom and live in this kingdom realm. Luke 9, 1 and 2 says, when Jesus called the disciples together, he gave them power and authority, drive out demons, all demons. I love that. It, it did not say just some people. He said all demons and to cure diseases. And he sent them out to preach the kingdom of God and to heal the sick. That was the message that they were supposed to take. I believe he said, if they don't accept you, what? Shake the dust off your feet. That was the, if they didn't receive, receive that message of the gospel of the kingdom, move along. Because if you did, if you look at the chosen, y'all, I'm going to say that one more time. <laughs> if you look at that episode where they went out when Jesus had empowered them to preach and teach, and they went out and they started teaching and preaching, and when you look at it, you could see some of them were timid, one of the ones, and Lord forgive me if I'm getting off, but I'm going to try and entice y'all to look at it. It was a demon-possessed guy there, and he was like this far, and he was like this, but he got the work done. He was a long way from him, but, <laughs> but you can see it was, it's, it's neat. Look at the chosen, T-H-E-C-H-O-S-E-N. I'm not even going to tell you how to find it. I'm not going to tell you where it is. Go look for it. Okay, Luke 9, 1 and 2 say, when Jesus had called the 12 together, he gave them power and authority to drive out all demons and to cure diseases. The demonstration of kingdom power is never for man's glory, but for the glory of God. And the second and final illustration that I'm going to give for kingdom advancement is prayer. And you know I have to end in prayer. That is my heart. Kingdom citizens will always see prayer as foundational and basic to everything they do. If you ain't praying, change. Start. Okay? Go to the Word. Find out what the Word of God says. And then pray that Word back to Him. Jesus, the King of kings and the Lord of lords, saw prayer as being, net, being a necessity in His ministry. Now, we talk about Jesus, y'all. Most people say, well, he was God. But when he was here, he moved in the realm of man. Now, if Jesus had to pray, Jesus needed to pray. You know, I shouldn't have to say anything else. Mark 135 says, very early in the morning, while it was still dark, Jesus got up, left the house, and went off to a solitary place where he prayed. This is but one illustration in the Gospels of Jesus placing power and value on prayer. Prayer was, for Jesus, was intense and powerful, okay? The book of Acts revealed many, many illustrations how prayer was important for the early church. After facing threats because of their witness, they found fresh boldness and power in prayer. Acts 4, 29, 31 says, Now, Lord, this is the apostles. They was facing a crowd of people. It says, now, Lord, consider their threats and enable your servants to speak your word with great boldness. That's what prayer is, speaking God's word. Stretch out, now this is what they're asking God to do. Stretch out your hand to heal and perform miraculous signs and wonders through the name of your holy servant, Jesus. Now, they have been preaching the gospel, and now what they're asking for is a visible demonstration of what they had been teaching and preaching, okay? And it says, after they prayed, 
the place where they were meeting was what? Shaken. And they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and spoke the word of God boldly. Wow. Now that's what I'm talking about. The kind of power and authority can only come through knowing the king and knowing his constitution. They knew their God. Amen. Hebrews 4, 14 through 16 says, Therefore, since we have a great high priest who has gone through the heavens, Jesus, the Son of God, let us hold firmly to the faith we profess. For we do not have a high priest who is unable to sympathize with our weaknesses. All right. God will sympathize with our weaknesses. He understands because he walked in this body. He walked in a body just like we did. You know, if you, he was spit on. He was abused. Were, things were said and done to him just like they are to us. Okay? And it says, but we have one who has been tempted in every way, just like we are. Yet he did not sin. Let us then approach the throne of grace with confidence so that we may receive mercy and find grace to help in our time of need. Glory to God. You know, but I, I love this. Even though he was tempted with our infirmities, even though he understood what we're going through, but it tells us this is the way we approach, though. Not all, you know, I know we cry and I know, but this is how we need to approach God. He says, let us then approach the throne of grace with what? Confidence. You know, wipe those tears up. Get, stand up, clean up, get up. And then say, okay, but God, you said. You said. And I'm going to take you at your word because the Bible says that you're not like man that you would lie. Okay? He says, let us then approach the throne of grace with confidence so that we may receive mercy and find grace to help us in our time of need. Jesus taught us how to pray. It is only through prayer that his kingdom purposes will be carried out on earth as it is in heaven. Prayer enforces his will on earth. Remember, you've heard it said, and I think this was, um, I read this in, somewhere. Without prayer, God will not. Now hear me now. Without prayer, if you don't pray about it, God ain't going to move. Without prayer, God will not. And without prayer, man cannot. So if we ain't praying, you know, you get, you, what you say, nothing from nothing. That's good math right there. That's not that new math they're teaching now. When the apostles asked Jesus to teach them to pray, Jesus responded. Why do you think they, they asked him to teach them to pray? That visible, what? Demonstration that we're talking about. Matthew 6, 9, and 10 says, This is how we should pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. What are we teaching about today? Advancing God's kingdom. Kingdom advance will never take place in any effective way apart from prayer or, or maybe even spiritual warfare. The message to the churches in Revelation 2 through 3 is an important message for us today. We must repent of losing our first love and becoming lukewarm. We were created to represent God through our dominion over the territory of earth through the gift we possess. I pray we discover our true identity while finding our place in the kingdom of God as his representatives, as his ambassadors. It is your choice, and it is your destiny. Lord, thy kingdom come. That's the message for today. Praise God. Amen, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Now, there might be some in this house. There may be some who are watching through social media who has heard about this kingdom and heard about this king but have yet to make that choice to choose Jesus as your Savior and your Lord. It's only then can you receive the rights and the privileges of a kingdom citizen. I remember pastor was saying that there are so many people trying to come to America. And what are they coming for? Citizenship. Because they know once they get here, there's things that they have privilege to. 
Well, that might be you today in the kingdom of God. There's so many things that God has for his people. God is a good God. And he has only good things for his children. He has gifts for us. He wants to, and, and, and he wants to be Lord over our lives. But you have to make a decision to trust him. You have to make that decision and say, Lord, I want to be a part of this kingdom. So, Father, I, 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 I ask you to invite Jesus in. Invite him into your heart. Invite him into your life. Ask him to forgive you of your sins. That's the thing that's holding you back. But it doesn't have to because Jesus gave his life. The Bible says, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever, you might be that whosoever, whosoever, whosoever. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Let us pray. And if that's you, pray this prayer. Father, I thank you for the gift of salvation. I thank you for sending Jesus to die on a cross for me. God, I thank you that you love me so much that you would die for me and pay the penalty that I should have paid but could not. Father, I invite you into my heart. Father, become Lord. Thank you as you become my Savior. Cleanse me from all unrighteousness and I promise as you continue to walk with me I give you my life unconditionally so now Lord take me thank you for saving me in Jesus name amen amen all right we've heard the message of the gospel We've heard how to advance God's kingdom. And we believe this morning for visible demonstrations. There may be some of you out there who don't know Jesus as your Lord and Savior. That's where it all began. There may be some today that are experiencing some things that Jesus gave his life for. Might be healing. awesome word of the Lord. I hope it was inspiring to you. I hope it was challenging for you as you walk your Christian journey. Uh, and please join us again on Wednesday night at 7 o'clock and hope to be with you again on next Sunday morning.